Welcome back to another video everybody. This is my new school bus and I just got it from the school district and I basically wanted to do a quick tour so you could see what this bus looks like straight from the school district before I do anything to them. So this is a 1998 Bluebird 5.9 Cummins 12 valve. It was the last year that they made the 5.9 Cummins 12 valve and it's 29 feet bumper to bumper so we're just gonna do a basic walkthrough so you guys can see what something like this is gonna look like before it's converted so a lot of a lot of people who are familiar with short buses you you hear them referred to a lot as like a four window a five window now a four window bus is typically 18 feet long bumper to bumper and a five window bus is typically 21 feet long bumper to bumper give yeah close enough right so this is 29 feet and these mo these came commonly mostly as like 25 28 29 30 in those sizes this is a 29 footer and this is nine windows so this being a 29 foot bus makes it and I guess we would call it a nine window bus in schoolies you're gonna hear the term flat nose and dog nose those are uh, and then van front ends, these are like different terms. Now this is called a flat nose. Now the really cool thing about a flat nose is all of your living space is inside. You know, there's only probably this much room between you and the outside of this bus. Now with a dog nose, you're gonna have that huge hood uh, and that's all real estate that's not inside of your bus. Uh, one isn't necessarily better than the other because the, the advantage of having a dog nose front end is like, the whole hood opens up and it's a lot easier to kind of work on it. There's a lot more space. But I, we're, we're gonna go inside here in a bit and I'm gonna show you what the, what the engine compartment looks like in here. But like, you know, when you're living tiny, every little bit of space really matters. And I was specifically looking for the flat nose because I wanted all my real estate inside of the bus. This is a commercial chassis bus. That means it's got big old semi truck wheels and tires on it. There's pros and cons to that. I usually typically like the van buses on van chassis because you can get normal wheels and tires. You know, it, it's kind of nice. The thing about these is they last a really, really long time. But, actually, yeah, I was just talking to a commercial bus driver today and he was telling me on their commercial fleet uh, 40 foot bus, they got 100,000 miles on one set of tires. So they do last a long time. The problem is they're very expensive. This is a 22 and a half uh, like uh, wheel tire situation here. Now, I have been told, I haven't looked into it yet, but to change the tires on one of these commercial chassis buses, you're looking at 5,000 dollars that's a lot different than a van chassis tire situation so that's something to keep in mind if you're gonna get a bigger bus when it comes time to get tires it's gonna be very expensive so as you're buying it maybe take a look at the tires and kind of see what the situation is one of the things that I kind of like about the commercial buses is they're typically taller so you got a bit more ground clearance now I'm not saying you should take these things off four wheeling and getting crazy but having that ground clearance can be kind of nice sometimes so we got our tape measure here and we're going to see how, how tall this thing is off the ground 22 inches of clearance from the ground to the body i'm not getting under there checking the suspension but the body is 22 inches off the ground which is nice check this door out this is also a lot bigger than a van chassis bus. So let's see how wide it is. The opening is 30 inches on this door. The bottom step is 12 inches from the ground. And I'm curious how tall this door is. Seventy-eight inches tall on the door. That is a big old door opening, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's go inside and show you what's going on in there. 
when you first come in the bus right now we have a whole bunch of seats we're gonna count them because I'm curious too and this is how many seats are in a 29 foot bus so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seats inside of here all right it does have a door in the back an emergency exit door in the back which is nice it has what's up halo it's got this emergency window here about center which is cool because it opens up you can prop it open kind of a really cool feature that we're definitely going to keep has one there and it's also got this one over here which we're stoked i've never had a bus with those before also the one thing i don't like the commercial buses have huge wheel wells can you see that it's got four of them so it's got a wheel well there there and then the other ones are up here i'll show you boom boom anybody that's built a bus before knows that wheel wells are a pain in the butt now in little buses they're a pain in the butt but in these they're way bigger and a lot more awkward to build around a lot of people are very curious how tall a bus is and we're going to find out right now how tall this one is it is 74 inches so about six foot three inches so if you're a five footer if you're under six feet you're pretty solid you get a little too crazy with your floor you're not a lot of people like to do roof raises i'm not one of them i don't need to and if you guys are curious how much a roof raise costs i got a quote from a guy it was 10 to 14 thousand dollars now obviously you can shop around and find your own person but you know just keep that in mind the average roof cost or roof raise on one of these 10 to 14 grand so if you need to do that maybe think about it all right so recap roof is 74 inches ceiling to floor stock all right y'all let's measure wall to wall how wide it is in here boy let me go the other way I'll do it up here. Come on, baby. 91 and a half. So almost eight feet wide. Okay, in the cockpit area, we have the engine cover that lifts up and we'll go in there in a minute. We have the driver's seat. We have our controls over here. We have our cluster and our school bus door which is just manual which I like because that means you don't got to do any funkiness and then one thing that I've never really seen before is this electronic transmission uh, and it does have air brakes so this is the air brake it's pulled out right now and then once you start the vehicle you just click neutral drive or reverse and that's it and then over here we have the heater controls and the vents for the heater right there down here we have our throttle brake and then over here there's a little button down here that's to turn our brights on and off and we turn our lights on right here one thing that's kind of cool in the bus is having this little like school bus driver door or driver window thing kind of cool makes it feel a little more epic and then look how big that front windshield is huge all right let's open up the engine bay and i'll talk we'll talk about this 5.9 comes 12 valve motor engine bay pops up there she is that's what i was looking for so let's talk about something school buses come with all kinds of different motors in them and sometimes it can be really hard to get them worked on now, I personally like the 7.3 Power Stroke Ford Short Bus Van Chassis buses. The reason I like them is because it's the same motor that's put in all of the Ford trucks. 
so you can get parts anywhere you can get mechanics anywhere anywhere there's a, a shop that'll work on a power stroke truck they can work on your bus you start getting away from that and start getting motors that are only put in commercial vehicles your only option is commercial shops which they do not like working on buses they make way more money working on semi trucks so the moral of the story is don't go out and just buy a bus to buy a bus without knowing what you're doing because you could find yourself in a world of trouble trying to get the thing worked on because it's a machine it will break now this is the 5.9 Cummins 12 valve which ended in 98 and a half so this bus being in 1998 this was the last year they put this motor in these and this is what I was looking for specifically the reason I was looking for these is the same way that the power stroke was put in the Ford buses this motor was put in Dodge trucks so same thing there's tons of aftermarket parts for them you can go to any auto parts store and get parts anywhere that'll work on a Dodge diesel truck can work on this so you're, you're not stuck with the commercial truck shops and you know the, these are icons the, these are known to go 500 to a million miles just like the power stroke so that's why I was looking for this bus very specifically these motors are known to be very reliable I can get parts anywhere I can find mechanics anywhere versus this being like a cat 7 motor you're only going to a commercial truck place period and it's gonna be expensive if they'll even work on it so keep that in mind as you're kind of looking around so this is the 5.9 Cummins 12 valve I was talking to a Cummins uh, mechanic the other day and he was telling me this motor can put out 500 horsepower without buying a part just with manual adjustments and tweaking stuff here and there uh, so this is my new personal bus watch out little watch out halo and I might make this a four a 500 horsepower school bus you know we'll see if we get crazy enough uh, but that's why I was looking for this thing very specifically was because of this motor reliability and ease of use to repair and maintain now the one downside of a 5.9 Cummins 12 valve is it's called the killer dowel pin now basically what that means is when these motors were made there's a pin that kind of holds the whole thing together and over the years they can come loose they go in your motor it's like a grenade blows it up that's like the Achilles heel of these motors so they sell a kit that's about ten dollars basically keeps the uh, the dowel pin from coming loose if you ever get one of these know about that you want to do it before I even build this bus I'm gonna have that done now just so you can have an idea of how much that costs the parts about ten bucks or the kits about ten dollars and if you're gonna do it yourself that's what it's gonna cost you if you take it to a dealer in something like this I was quoted about fourteen hundred dollars because of labor to get to it and get in there and put it in so 5.9 Cummins 12 valve is amazing you know you just need to do that killer dial pin kit if you're gonna keep it forever but that is the 29 foot bus let me shut this and then we'll we'll take this out All right, everyone, that's gonna be it for this tour. So again, this is a 1998 29 foot Bluebird 5.9 Cummins 12 valve bus. It's nine windows. And this is what it looks like straight from the school district. And now we're gonna start tearing it apart and turn it into a tiny home. So if you like bus life, you like bus life adventures you like building buses and you're not already subscribed consider subscribing and i'm stoked to turn this into a home and this thing is going to be built out in the next two months because i have a baby due and it needs to be done before that so make sure to stick around if you want to see this thing get turned from this school bus into a house my name is isaac and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching and if you want to leave a comment it really does help these videos if you just go down there and say something cool or just say comment or whatever. But I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for being here. Bye.